leaders need to model behavior. Um, like parents need to model behavior. Um, so for example, uh, I'll give you a, you know, a company says, you know, we believe in integrity and always telling the truth. And then the phone rings and, you know, uh, an assistant picks up the phone and, and, the, and the executive says, tell them I'm not in. You know, well, congratulations, you've just sanctioned lying. You know? Um, and so it's one thing to write it on the wall, it's another thing to actually practice the thing that's written on the wall. Um, so modeling the behavior is absolutely essential um, because your actions will speak much louder than your words. Um, and uh, the stories do matter. Um, uh, stories are much more powerful than statistics. W w uh, what did Stalin say? Um, uh, he, I'm quoting Stalin. <laughs> um, uh, the death of one man is a, uh, the, uh, the death of one man is a tragedy. The death of a million is a statistic. Interesting. I think he said it the other way around. The death of a million men is a yeah. statistic. The one of them is a tragedy. And uh, I'll give you a real life example, um, just to just to put it into into. So let's let's say something like, okay, so um, uh, COVID ravaged uh, the world. Um, some would argue expectedly. Some would argue unexpectedly. But it happened. And over the course of just over a year. Um, 600,000 people in the United States alone have lost their lives. Um, many women, uh, uh, children, and fathers, and mothers, and, and, and families destroyed by this, by this, this horrible uh, virus. Okay, that's true, right? Here's story number two. Um, I know this young woman who lives in northern, uh, Southern California. Her name is uh, Cami Yoder. Cami was driving home from work one day, and she turned the corner and came upon an, a car accident that had just happened. The ambulance hadn't arrived yet. Um, uh, a 17-year-old driver accidentally hit an 18-year-old pedestrian with her car. Uh, the girl was lying on the, sh on the street, one of her legs at, an, at, an, at a, um, an, an uncomfortable angle, a 90-degree angle. Um, Cami pulled over her car, got out. Thank goodness she actually knows basic uh, first aid. She performed CPR on the young girl to keep her alive until the, the paramedics arrived. Um, eventually, the paramedics came. They took over from Cami, and they took the girl to the hospital. A couple of days later, Cami was curious what had happened to her, and she um, uh, went on uh, the, 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 the blotter. She went on, on, online and found out that the young girl had actually died. Which was more powerful to you, the death of 600,000 people or the death of one young girl in California? The second. And the second one gave you goosebumps. The first one didn't. And that's the point, which is, what's the difference between 500,000 people dead or 600,000 people to 650,000 people dead? It emotionally moves us zero. Um, but when you tell the story of a person who is a, an example of what happens, if we tell the story of one death of COVID, and how it's affected that family, the emotional impact is vastly more powerful than simply relaying statistics and numbers. And so yes, I do believe that part of being a good leader is not just the intent, but part of good leadership is the ability to communicate. Um, those, thing are, those things, I think, are inextricably linked. And learning how to tell a story, quite frankly, that captures the value of your work. Because people can relay those stories much easier than they can relay or remember the statistics. Throughout the organization. Throughout the organization. The story gets passed down, passed Correct. down, sometimes generations. Generationally. And, and great organizations, like great cultures, have a myth. You know, um, there, there's stories that have been passed down generations in, in nations about the founding. Yeah. You know, the Marine Corps celebrates their birthday every year. Um, there's debate whether that's actually even their birthday or not. It doesn't even matter, right? right? Um, and, and it becomes part of the culture. These stories become ingrained, you know, uh, George Washington and the cherry tree. Yeah, was it a cherry tree? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, like, the, the, they become ingrained in the fabric of the, of the nation. So too do they become ingrained in the fabric of, of the company. And like religion, like anything, it's the stories that capture the morals and values much better than just writing them on the wall.